Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're starting a new series, so we're going to be doing sequences and series. So let's go and dive into it. Today we're going over like what is a sequence. So we're just going to be very general today, but we're also going to be talking about a recurrence relation and explicit formula. So stay tuned. So let's go and think about sequences. Here, just think of a list. A sequence is literally just a list of numbers, but there are some things about sequences that we can talk about. First is that we always have a starting number. So notice here that we start with the value of one, right? We also can find a relationship very often between the numbers. So with this sequence, notice that what we're doing is we're adding three every time we increase. So notice we start at one and then we increase three, right? And then from four to seven, we add three. From seven to 10, we add three. And that relationship is gonna keep going on, right? Another thing that we can talk about is that we can name the numbers. So very often what we do is we write this as a sub one. It is the first number of the sequence. The second number is a sub two. The third number is a sub three, so on and so forth. So a sequence looks something like this, a one, a two, a three, and on and on. Some people like to start at zero though. They say a zero, a one, a two, a three, and so on. Another way that you can write this is a sub n, starting at n equals one, going all the way to infinity, because notice these sequences don't have an end. This dot, dot, dot means it's gonna go on forever. And finally, we can write some kind of formula for the numbers. So notice here that I have that a sub one is equal to one. a sub two is equal to one plus three, which is equal to four. a sub three is equal to four plus three, which is equal to seven. But what if I went ahead and rewrote this as a sub two is equal to a sub one, which is the one plus three. Then I can also rewrite this one as a sub three is equal to a sub two, which was equal to four plus three. So notice what kind of relationship we have going on here. We have a n plus one, which is the bigger one, is equal to a n plus three. A n is a previous term, right? The reason it's n plus one is because notice here we have a three compared to a two. Here we have a two compared to a one. So this a n is always gonna be one less. And so here we have our formula and this is actually called a recurrence relationship. We'll go more into that. And we say for n is equal to one, two, three, all the way down to infinity, right? And so this is the kind of relationship that we have. So that's a little nice introduction, but let's go through the definition. We have a sequence with squiggle lines a sub n is an ordered list of numbers. Notice here that it's ordered. And it's of the form a sub one, a sub two, going all the way down and forever, right? We have the sequence may be generated by a recurrence relation of the form a sub n plus one is equal to f of a sub n. So in our case, we were a sub n plus three. That's a function of a sub n. Think of the a sub n as an x, right? It's just a function of x. And this is for n is equal to one, two, three, where the first term a sub one is given. So in our example, right, a sub n plus one is equal to that whole thing. And we also had that our first term was equal to one. Another way that this may be defined is with an explicit formula. So instead of being a function of a sub n, it's now just a function of n. And normal a sub n is equal to it. And then we have n is equal to one, two, three. We're gonna go ahead and see an example of this. And we've already talked about the notation, so I'll just leave that there for you guys to look at. So here we wanna talk about an explicit formula. We have that a sub n is equal to one over two to the n, which is why it's a function of n. So here we wanna go ahead and write out the first five terms of the sequence. So let's go ahead and do a sub one. Here we're gonna plug in n is equal to one, so we get one half. a sub two, n is equal to two, so we get one fourth. a sub three, n is equal to three, so one over two cubed, which is equal to one over eight. I'm gonna move over here, we have a sub four is gonna be equal to one over two to the fourth, which is 1 16th. And then a sub five, I'm just replacing n each time with the same indice, right? And this is equal to one over 32. So if I were to write this out as a sequence, right? We have our first term, that was a terrible squiggle, but that's okay. One half, one fourth, one eighth, one sixteenth, one over 32, so on and so forth. So a little vocabulary for us, this right here, the little numbers, is called the index. And so the index is n, it's gonna be counting numbers, one, two, three, four, sometimes we start at zero, it's gonna be that sort of thing. So in summary, a recurrence relationship depends on the previous term. So in our previous example, a n plus one, the next term, depends on a sub n and we add three to it. Explicit formulas depend directly on n. So in our example, a sub n was equal to one over two to the n. 
And both of these have 4n is equal to 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth, right? So notice in that explicit formula, there's actually a way we can write this in terms of a recurrence relation. So notice here that we're starting off a sub 1 is equal to 1 half. And each time what we're doing is we're multiplying by 1 half, right? Multiply by 1 half, multiply by 1 half, so on and so forth. So we would say a sub n plus 1, the next term is equal to 1 half times a sub n. So it doesn't always have to be one or the other. It can be both. This has both an explicit formula and a recurrence relation. So let's try an example here. We have a sub n equals negative 1 to the n times n divided by n squared plus 1. We're going to write the first four terms and we're going to sketch a graph of it. Yes, we can graph sequences. And this right here is going to be an explicit formula. So let's go ahead and do this thing. a1, when we plug in 1, is going to be equal to negative 1 to the power of 1 times 1 divided by 1 squared plus 1. That's going to be equal to negative 1 half. So let's go ahead and graph that. We're going to go down here and we're going to fill in our point A1. It is just a point. So now let's do A2. That's going to be negative 1 squared, which is positive 1 times 2. N is equal to 2, right? So we get 4 plus 1. This is going to be 2 this. So I'm going to go over to my 2, right? Because this represents the index N. And then our Y axis is actually the A sub N, right? So here for a 2, we're going to go up to 2 fifths, which is probably going to be like right there. I'm just guesstimating. a 3, we're going to go ahead and plug in n is equal to 3, which we can see on our little graph. Here we get negative 1 times 3 divided by 9 plus 1. That's going to be negative 3 tenths. It's going to be a little bit above a quarter, and so we get a 3. Let's go ahead and try to graph out a 4. So a 4 is going to be 1 times 4 divided by 16 plus 1. That's going to be 4 over 17, and I'm just going to guesstimate again that a4 is going to be something like this. So notice this is not like a solid function. It's not going to do something like this. It's only filled in at these specific indices, right? And so it's just going to be a graph of points, and that's what a sequence looks like graphically. Here we have a given a sub n is equal to negative 2, 5, 12, 19. I, let's go ahead and just do the first one. We're going to write out the next two sequences of the terms. So let's go ahead and try to find a pattern. So notice each time right here I'm adding 7, right here I'm adding 7, right here I'm adding 7. So what I'm going to do in order to get my next term is I'm going to add 7. So we get 26, 26 plus 7 is 33, and those are our next two terms. For the second bullet here, we're going to find a recurrence relation that generates a sequence. So of course, for a recurrence relation, we always need the first value, and that's going to be negative 2. So here we have our next term is going to depend on adding 7 to the previous term, right? And so that's a recurrence relation. And then here we're going to write out our explicit formula. So I'm going to rewrite our sequence. What I'm going to do is try to find a pattern. So here, and I'm always going to start with the first term. From the first to the second, I add 7. From the first to the third, I add 14. From the first to the fourth, I'm going to add 21. And then finally, from the first, what is that, to the fifth, I'll just stop at that one, I'm adding 28. So let's go on and try to rewrite these. This is going to be, the from the first to the second, we're going to take negative 2, and we're going to add 7 times 1. From the first term to the third, we're going to add 7 times 2, right? We're adding 14. From the first to the fourth, we're adding 21, which is equal to 7 times 3. And then finally, we're taking negative 2 and we're adding 28, which is 7 times 4. So our explicit formula is going to look something like this. a sub n is equal to negative 2 plus 7 times n. For n is equal to, and actually what we're going to be starting at is 0 in order to get the first term, right? Because we have to get the negative 2. If we start at 1, we're going to get negative 2 plus 7, which is equal to 5, which is the second term. So that's why sometimes we start at 0, which is totally okay to do that. And then we're going to go to 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth. Okay, finally, we have another problem. We're going to be doing the same thing, but we have a new sequence. So here we have 3, 6, 12, so on and so forth. So for our first thing, we're going to go ahead and find the next two terms of the sequence. So I'm going to rewrite it. Let's go ahead and find the pattern. So for the first to the second, I'm multiplying by 2. From 6 to 12, we're multiplying by 2. 12 to 24, we're multiplying by 2. We're beginning to see the pattern here. So let's multiply this by 2. We get 96. Multiplying that by 2, we get um, 192. And those would be the next two terms of our sequence. So now we're going to go ahead and write out a recurrence relation that generates a sequence. So here we have the, the first term is going to be equal to 3. 
And now we want to figure out a way to find the next term depending on the previous term. And that's going to be taking the previous term and multiplying it by 2, right? Or you can rewrite that as 2a sub n. Either of those are going to be totally okay. Finally, we want to write an explicit formula. So let's go ahead and rewrite the sequence. So remember, just like last time with adding, I want to find a relationship between the first term and all of the following. This one's not going to be adding, though, because we now we have a sequence that's being multiplied. So now I want to think of it in terms of multiplication. So in order to get from 3 to 6, we multiply by 2, right? In order to get from 3 to 12, we need to multiply by 4. To go from 3 to 24, we need to multiply by 8. And then finally, to go from 3 to 48, we're going to have to multiply by 16, right? So let's go ahead and try to rewrite this. So in order to do 6, we multiply 3 times 2, right? In order to get to 12, we multiply 3 times 4. But that can be rewritten as 3 times 2 squared. For 24, we took 3 and we multiplied by 8. But let's rewrite that as a power of 2 because we can see a pattern going on here. That's going to be 2 cubed. Finally, we took 3 and we multiplied it by 16. And again, I'm going to rewrite that as 3 times 2 to the 4th. So notice here what's changing. The thing that's changing is going to be what our n is equal to. Everything else that's the same, so 3, 3, 3, 3, that's all the same. We have times 2. That's all going to be in our normal formula. So here we have that a sub n is equal to 3 times 2 to the n. And this one has to start at 0 as well, right? Because we have to get the first term. If we plug in 0, we get 3 times 1, which is equal to 3. If we started at 1, we would be missing 3. But we need to have that as our starting term. So that's all I have for us in this video today. If you enjoyed it and many more like it, so make sure to check out my playlist or link down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other problems or topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.